Buon Camino, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to film a series of the long-awaited sequels to some of my previous videos. One, uh, I'm going to talk later on in my book review series about the second book by Kevin A. Codd, which I said I was going to review like months ago when I started the channel. And then the other thing is for today's vlog, which is this video, I want to start with I Got Robbed Part 2. Because a lot of people have asked me, like, how did the whole thing with the identity theft go, your money, your travel plans, so I uh, decided to film a video about it. Plus, it's, like, my most watched video, so I think everyone is, like, interested in me getting my identity stolen and how that turned out, and not so much about my book reviews. So, to recap, uh, I and several other of my coworkers, uh, I don't know if it's connected or if it was randomly, all got uh, either our credit cards or our debit card information stolen like around the same time. And it doesn't seem like it was a coincidence because it was like four out of five people on my management team. Um, but we use different banks and nobody can really find a valid connection between everything except for the stores. I mean, we do all go to similar places because we live like in similar areas, but we don't all necessarily shop in any one given place that we would know that our identity got stolen and I looked and didn't really find uh, other cases around here where you could be sure that there was some kind of like skimming system or somebody was just, you know uh, affecting card readers or something other people asked if it could be because I'm booking all kinds of international stuff and had my credit card out on the internet on sites that I wouldn't normally do and I am going to talk in one video about um, how I've gone through booking things um, but basically, no, I don't think so. Like, uh, the only one kind of, like, weird place was when I was booking Orison, and th they did that, uh, all through, uh, PayPal account, so that wasn't really actually too weird, and then a lot of stuff I've booked through, um, Expedia, Kiwi, or Booking.com. I haven't really had my credit card information out at weird sites, um, so I don't know. I do know that when... One of the uh, other managers, who's a friend of mine, was hacked. Uh, some of the money was spent at some of the same places, like a place called Hannaford, which is like a grocery store that we don't even have around here. I don't know. They're in other states, but not around here. Um, and just similar similar type places where the money was spent. Um, but getting back to what happened to me personally, when I first uh, saw that the charges came through, I was actually out uh, walking at the lake with my backpack, training on the Camino. I had been, I had already gone like eight kilometers or something like that. Uh, I got to like this welcoming center, which if I ever do my Seneca Lake video, I'll show you the welcoming center. Um, I took a break there. I went to get a drink. I looked at my card balance. I had been waiting for some charges to come through like that Orison booking. And boom, all my money has been spent, even though I checked a couple hours earlier and I, and I knew that, you know, I had like two weeks worth of my check in that account because it was direct deposited. All of a sudden it was now gone. I called up right away, like within 20 minutes, half an hour of these charges, I called right away and I was like, look, I got like seven charges on here. And none of them are mine. These are all look like they're from another state. They all look like they're from New Hampshire. Uh, long story short, that first guy that I talked to on the customer service line, because I pulled out my phone, I immediately stopped what I was doing. I immediately went on and was like, what's going on? Like, all my money just got spent by somebody in New Hampshire, and it's not me. I'm in Geneva, right? I'm in New York State. I'm not in New Hampshire. That first guy told me that my funds would be refunded in, like, seven days. He was going to open, like, the um, dispute account, uh, and he said it would, like, take, like, seven days. So... Those transactions, I could see on my banking app, and they were, like, pending. They were pending, and they were pending, and then, like, um, so, okay, well, within seven days, I was supposed to get my new card, because, obviously, they closed my old card and put the account on a new card. So, they were going to send me a new card in the mail within seven business days, and seven to ten business days, I was supposed to have my funds refunded. That is what the first customer service guy told me, explicitly, like, directly, that that was going to happen. So, within... Less than seven business days, I got my new card. I'm like, okay, this is a good thing, right? And then I waited 10 business days, which would have been two full weeks, and I didn't, didn't get any of my money. So after two weeks after this incident, I called back 
to customer service. I was like, well, you know, I've gotten my new card. I've gotten my next check. And, you know, I still don't have these funds available. And, like, before they all said pending. And now they all, like, cleared. And the new person told me that, oh, well, now you have to, like, file a dispute. But you, you can't just even, like, do it over the phone or online. You have to, like, we're going to send you a printed piece of paper in the mail <laughs> which then you have to fill out like with a pen like it was the 1800s and then mail back to us using the united states postal service uh and then when we have a like written um dispute of these charges then we will open an investigation which could take as long as like 90 days and then depending on what our investigation finds then we'll refund your funds and I, um, like, I didn't even want to start there. I was like, just, just send me to somebody higher up. Cause like, now you're going to deal with a really unhappy version of me. And if anybody doesn't know me personally, the normal me is like, I'm a pretty nice guy. I think maybe the angry me, like the, like when I've hit my like button, it goes from like two to like 20. There's not even like a 10. Right? It just, um, you know, it's like Satan take the wheel. The, like, it just comes out of me. Like, you know, I mean, I I go from, like, just, like, normal to, like, you know, the, the part in the Godzilla movie where he's just, like, wrecking the city for fun. Like, just burning it. Like, he's just, ah, that's, like, me. <laughs> there's no, like, there's no, like, I'm not, like, a seven angry. I'm never, like, a, oh, you know, I'm I'm quite upset about this. It's, like... Holding back, holding back, holding back, holding boom. So I went to my boom stage. I was still trying to hold back a little bit because I kept every other sentence that I'm talking to the customer service for. So I'm like, I know you didn't personally do this. This is your job, but, and then I would just be, rah. and so that was a bad conversation. That was a bad interaction. Uh, and it's terrible because I have to interact with customers and, you know, in my past job, I've had to interact with students who have really upset me, <laughs> and I've, you know, I've, I've been on, on, on the, on the other end of, like, people that are just, like, you're, like, oh, great, this person is just, just gonna set me off, and so I don't like to be that guy that's, like, upset with someone when they're doing their job, if they're in customer service, or they're in IT, or whatever, but I'm just, like, this is totally unacceptable, because other people that have other banks, like Citigroup, and my one friend had a local credit union, they got their problems taken care of, like, quickly one city group i think was in four hours um the the local credit union was in a few days and now they're telling me months and the other person who also uses this banking system um they are still giving her the runaround she doesn't have her money back so uh, they, then i i was really upset because they hadn't even started like the dispute process or whatever so whatever that first guy told me he was basically saying like well, the merchants will reverse it, but if the merchants don't, then you would have to go through all of this. And so that first guy did a really bad job, um, which is funny because I liked him because he was like probably telling me things that I wanted to hear, but he did a really bad job because he didn't give me accurate information. Uh, then the next, uh, the next thing is I'm going to get this thing in the mail. So I, I told the person how unhappy I was, but they're sending this thing out to me. This is two weeks later. So then it's like, finally, I get this thing in the mail. And then it was the weekend. So I had to wait until Monday. So then the day that I ended up like sending in this uh, written complaint and everything, it ended up being like 30 days after my money had initially been taken. So I've had like another like two checks since this. So I, I was fine. Actually, I ended up saving a lot of money because I was like, well... You know, I'm down all this money. I've got to really like save now because I don't know when I'm going to get this. I'm thinking 90 days. This could be like, I could have already left in, for Spain by the time that I get this money refunded. So it all ended up back in my account. I got these provisional accounts that they had been talking about all, all along that refunded it to me. But the funny thing is, is that I filled out the paperwork. I went to the post office put the stamp on, handed it to the lady, whatever, or I paid for it, whatever, walked out, 
went in my car, once again, just checked my balance because I've just been looking at this thing. And literally, it had been two minutes, right, <laughs> since I'd sent the, the letter across the counter. So, no, you know, no possible way that it was anywhere other than on the counter. And uh, my funds were back. So I was like thinking, he's almost like Harry Potter or something. It was like a little bit like magical because it's like literally they said that I wouldn't get my money back until I filled out this paperwork. And like literally right when I did within two minutes, somehow like serendipitously that happened. But it, it was so random that it seemed like magic. So I did get my money back and it did help me actually in the long run kind of save some money because for two weeks I was like really going like you know, not tapping into my savings, really just kind of going with the few hundred dollars that I had had taken out for something else. I ended up like just really getting by on like ramen noodles and crap like that. Uh, I was really living thinly. Um, and then since then I've been like, oh, I've got all this extra money now. And now I'm really thinking like, no, you probably need to save as much as you can because we probably missed our Q2 bonus by a little bit, but that would have been some money that would have gone into my Camino funds. So that's how it turned out. It took 30 days to get my money back. I screamed at a lady from India. Uh, I was lied to by the first, the first guy. And for weeks after that, actually, when my check would come in, I just take all the money out of the account and I've just been keeping, you know, basically my money somewhere else. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's, it's really frustrating. I think, um, it's the second time in my life that I've had really bad, frustrating experiences when I was using Bank of America. One was when I was much younger. Um, and back then they just seemed to have a ton of fees and, and account balance minimums and this and that and the other thing that's really frustrating. And then this time, I just think it was bad information from the customer service. Um, and I still don't know, like, why on that one day, particularly they refunded my funds, but... It was not a good experience, but I tried to maintain my temperament through it all. I tried to take it with a grain of salt. The first two weeks I really did, and then I had one bad experience where I turned into Godzilla for a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, it's settled now. Uh, it was bad experience, but I guess it was a learning experience. And uh, I'm back on track, so my next video I also want to talk about what I've done since I got my funds back and um, some of my booking and planning and my reservations and kind of different thoughts that have been going through my head because we're getting a lot closer to the Camino. We're at 62 days now. I think my first vlog, I was at 123. So, and I think just a couple weeks ago, I posted that 90 day one, but I had filmed it a while back. So if it's like, if time is like scooting forward as you're watching this, you're like, how did it go from like 90 days to like 62 days? It's like, well, sometimes I record these things and I don't post them right away. Um, and sometimes that's just because something else gets in the way. Like that Seneca Lake video, I actually am going to make that someday. And I have things filmed for it. But every time that I've tried to do it, um, it just didn't work out. I like did my trail videos first. I did the Titanic Falls video. And like it's just like, yeah, Seneca Lake, I'm going to do that like someday. And I like even film stuff for it. But... Now every day is in the 80s here, and it's getting, like, really, really hot out. Even, right like now, it's, like, 10 o'clock, and it's, it was a really cool night last night. It was in the 50s, but now it's, like, yeah, we're going straight back up to the 80s. Praying for everybody that's on the Camino right now. I don't think anybody that's on the Camino right now is watching this video, but um, they've experienced temperatures in the 40s over there, Celsius, which is, like, over 100 here. It could be, like, 105, 110 um, that, they're, that they're dealing with. So if you were out walking... My prayers are definitely with you guys. Buon Camino to you. Stay safe. Uh, and for everybody else that's just watching this because they like to hear me talk, there's going to be lots of new episodes this week. I'm staying out here at the family estate because everyone else is in Virginia. So I've decided that instead of dealing with the wind, with the lake in the background, I've got my wonderful apple trees. The family apple orchard is behind me. So hopefully that's nice and beautiful. I'm all alone abandoned in New York where the rest of my family gets to go see the new baby and everything. But I'm um, just going to keep training, walking, dealing with the 80 degree heat and getting the rest of my plans together. I've got uh, two months from today, but you know, it's like, uh, it's like July, August. So they're like long months, but uh, we're really close now. Buon Camino, everybody. See you soon.